campl.ca newsroom for this week marty thompson and charlie o'connor clark are back for another week as we anxiously anticipate the start of the 2021 cpl season we have stuff to talk about this week. yeah finally <laughs> uh let's quickly fire through this the women's national team uh a roster was uh, announced on thursday just the day after we we're recording this for a couple friendlies uh before the olympics um let's just quickly talk about who was selected because clearly this group is 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 getting a prime opportunity to show itself before tokyo um mm-hmm. what did you make of the squad what are some highlights out of it uh yeah well who is selected is pretty much everyone <laughs> <laughs> that's the other issue yes this that's is... the other issue i think it's 23 players right 28 or more 28, 28. Sorry, 28, 28. Yeah, this is a big, big squad. Uh, it, I think this is probably the strongest women's national team squad we've seen this year, though. Because, uh, I mean, Kadisha Buchanan comes back in. I think that's the big one. She hasn't played for the national team since, I guess, last March. Uh, mm-hmm. So certainly not under Bev Priestman, which is awesome to have her back in. Uh, other than that, I mean, all of the, you know, the regular... Regular stars are in here, Sinclair, you know, and so on. And there's a couple of young, uh, young players that people are excited to see. I mean, Chloe Lacasse is back in. She didn't. I think she was at the British camp, but she didn't play. She'd be an interesting one to see if she gets a cap. And then Bianca Saint George is in as well. Uh, she missed, I think, both of both of the last two camps because of injury. Uh, she's a pretty exciting fullback that I think a lot of people are kind of interested to see what she can do at this level. Uh, could be a bit of a wild card. So it's honestly on on the whole, it's like everybody is here. It's a very strong squad. I think <laughs> I don't I think pretty much the Olympic squad will be picked from this number. You just cut whoever the bottom ten are from this group from this group. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, Kaylin Sheridan's in as well. After yeah, her injury. I, yeah, yeah. So So yeah. you mentioned you say that everyone's in, but Diana Matheson is not in. Everybody except for Diana Matheson. Yeah. I think. <laughs> well, I think it's that, pretty telling, to be honest. Yes, yes, it is. And uh, Bev Priestman took a, a, a comment during the uh, during the press conference yesterday after the squad announcement, and you know, it is what it is, right? She's not healthy, not ready. So that's probably it for her for the Olympics. It's crazy. I yeah. mean, she's made over two hundred appearances, and you know, as part of both of those squads that 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 medaled. So. It's really unfortunate not to have her there. Uh, yeah. What like what are some names that we should be looking out for for this camp specifically with the idea that there are spots still up for grabs? Two games, uh, one mm-hmm. against the Czech Republic and another against Brazil, which is interesting as a rematch of the She Believes Cup where Canada uh, lost. Uh, what like give us some names? Who who's on the bubble here? Uh, well, yeah, there's definitely. I think most of the spots are pretty much full, but. Uh, you maybe look to see if there's any, like I'd be kind of interested to see who starts these games in goal, uh, whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, Sheridan or, or Steph Labe could be either. I, 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 th- I would assume they're both going to Tokyo, but this might be a kind of situation where you give Sheridan the games to see if she can win her, st- her starting spot back. Um, I, maybe you, you start to wonder if, if Evelyn Vian can still, you know, push her way up the chart and, and, I think after the the last camp, we talked about whether or not she might be able to pass Jordan Heidema even for that spot, and I think that's maybe the the battle that you're watching for in this in this camp because uh, there aren't actually a lot of spots to to maybe be won here because just the Olympic squad is so small and there's so little space for you know like there's there's no space for luxury players or or players that you know you aren't necessarily comfortable with with starting in a big game. Uh, maybe be interested to see uh, Sophie Schmidt and Desiree Scott. I don't know if both of them can be on the Olympic team either. That's interesting. Yeah. This team is this team is in just such a is in is in transition in such an interesting way, right? Where you have two of those mm-hmm. players as well. Like you're right. Like could they yeah. both go? I, I I don't I think you probably want to bring Desiree Scott to the Olympics just for her kind of versatility, she's maybe the only kind of real ball winning midfielder that they have at the moment. And she can mm-hmm. also play center back as well. And she's looked a little better than, than Schmidt, I think in the very short sample size, but uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely a few 
kind of individual battles that I think we should be looking at here. It'd be interesting to see just even tactically how, how Priestman is kind of setting up this team because I think she's really going to especially use his Brazil game as a proper kind of preview tune-up for for the Olympic tournament. So I think there's definitely a lot to be looking out for. Okay, two games again against the Czech Republic on June 11th and then Brazil on June 14th. Uh, Bev Priestman saying that a full Olympic squad will be announced somewhere around 10 days after those games. So we should be getting it. I mean, that's still almost a month away. Who am I kidding? (laughs) We still have a long time to wait. (laughs) Yeah, we do. Uh, And then, okay, switching to the men's game, we have our Canadian men's national team, our annual depth chart coming up here. But we should mention Jems Griffard from HFX Wanderers getting Mm -hmm. called up to the Haitian national team. Um, I asked him just before uh, before he went live here uh, if he's excited to play Canada. Uh, He said, it's different beating Canada uh, it's like beating your brother. Of course, yeah. he was born in Montreal. So if if Haiti does move on past this group and Canada does, then they'll play each other. But um, I mean, I'm going yeah, to I'm gonna knock on wood that we do get to see that matchup. <laughs> but uh, and that's what I told him. I was like, you know what? This is yet to happen, but it'd be you know it'd be nice. It'd mm-hmm. be, it, it would be just nice to see to see you have yeah. to beat Canada again. It'll certainly be a conflicting afternoon for Stephen Hart to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to some Halifax staffers. They're in the same boat. Yes, yeah. Stephen would also be. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to Gems. We'll be looking forward to that. Uh, a big game against Nicaragua. That'll be a group decider um, mm-hmm. when Canada, uh, around the same time, rather, that Canada plays Suriname. So we know, yes, we, we'll, we'll move on to the men's national team here now. Uh, two big games coming up. Suriname is, is the big one. We've talked about it at length already on this show. Uh, mm-hmm. We know that the squad for these uh, two uh, two qualifiers, the other one against Aruba, are, is coming out probably this weekend. It has to be pretty soon because the yeah, first game... Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, the, the, the first game's coming up uh, uh, rather soon. So, without further ado, we decided to go through the men's national team pool, frankly, during a very difficult Let's time. Let's go. I'm excited. A very, okay, a very difficult time to go through the pool and try to parse out what a depth chart actually is because yeah. there has been two competitive games in... 16 18 months long time like and a Anyways. lot of new players have come into the into the fold in that time which right. just means more debate oh yeah oh yeah i <laughs> cannot wait to be yelled at on twitter for how uh right we are it'll be time to log off <laughs> you're gonna have to log off okay it's always let's, to log off <laughs> let's start with the uh, goalkeepers so um obviously milan borian is is number one here that's not really a debate but it really does come down to these second and third slots especially with you know something like world cup qualifiers coming up charlie like mm-hmm. we've got maxim crepeau in second but dane st Clair, you know minnesota united he could easily find us you know find a spot in that second slot right oh yeah uh, i i think st Clair has probably been better than crepeau at the club level for mm, i don't know if at least maybe maybe probably almost a year. Um, and I think this is one of those situations where the tie goes to the guy that's been around the national team setup a little bit more. And I think we actually have a few of those situations coming up here in other positions, but yeah, I think just cause Crapo has been kind of the de facto number two for probably about two years now. Yeah. Um, it's yep. still, it's still his spot to lose, but St. Clair is hot on his heels. And I think, he will be put into one of these games sooner rather than later just to see what he's got. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Also, James Pantemis, Marco Carducci. Marco two, Carducci. <laughs> two, <laughs> two former, uh, one former CPLer, and obviously Marco uh, going up for Calvary FC. Okay, mm-hmm. fullbacks. That's right. Alfonso Date. Oh, sorry. Alfonso Davies not on this one. We'll get to no. him later. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, with any Canadian uh, men's national team depth chart, it just comes down to where Alfonso Davies is. Yeah. So up the left, Sam Adekube is our, our first choice left back, and then Richie Larea on the right. Um, after that, Charlie, uh, what are we looking at? Yeah, I think the, the, real, the real interesting name here is Christian Gutierrez, who I, we haven't seen play yet for Canada. Uh, pretty it was pretty good coup to to get him to commit to Canada so now that he's been getting into a few camps and 
you kind of hope to see what he's got. Uh, so we don't really know exactly where to slot him in this. Uh, I think when we were putting this together, it stood out to me that this this position is actually a little deeper than I thought it was for Canada. Um, because because I, I maybe two years ago we would have been like, well, I don't know who could play either fullback position other than Davies, which is part and, of the reason and, that you would have maybe thought he might play there. But now you've got Adekubi on the left, you got Gutierrez, you got Juan Cordova, and then you got the younger guys like like Basong and, and Diadine and Abzi uh, at, at York United. So I think you've got plenty of talent out there on the left, which is is kind of interesting all of a sudden. You've got depth there. And then, I mean, right back was always a bit of a, a thing with the men's national team. But now, you know, realistically with Larea. Zachary Brokeyard and and Alistair Johnson, you have conceivably three starting right backs in MLS. Yeah. And 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 like that in in all younger players. And then obviously Mo Farsi and Caden Chung of Cavalry FC and and Pacific FC as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I uh it was hard for me not to put Caden Chung way further up because I just think he's so good and is gonna end up playing for this team one day. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um I think that we should probably call out where Marty originally slotted Zachary Brogiard on his personal depth chart. All right, <laughs> I, I had him. I had him number one. I had him above Larea. Yeah, I'm I, I thinking, want to put I'm you thinking, on blast for that. I want you to take the heat for that. I'm sick and tired <laughs> of all this Toronto bias. You know, <laughs> just because just because Larea plays for Toronto FC. Well, I just I, something something makes me think the same way that you believe that Ken Chung's gonna emerge. I just think Zachary Brogiard has everything needed to be um challenging Larea uh soon and then frankly he might be able to beat him. I think he was really good at the Olympic qualifying. Um, you know, again, he's maybe played like a little bit more of an attacking role to what Cano will be expecting from a right back. Yeah. Especially if Alfonso Davies plays on the left. But at the same time, like I, I think he's really good. He's young and clearly Herdman uh has has liked him. He's 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 got tons of call up. He's been included like in, in many camps. So mm-hmm. I just think he's there. Yeah, I mean, Brogiard certainly does keep getting <laughs> keep getting brought back into the fold. I think Alistair Johnston is is a very interesting one because he's a very different kind of fullback to to Larea or Brogiard. He's you know a little bit more well rounded. He can kind of win the ball back for you a little bit a little bit more. He's not as fast, maybe not as much attacking upside, but I really do think that he's a guy that there's a lot of use for, especially in games against against bigger opponents, which we're Again, knocking on wood, hopefully going to see in the fall. Uh, so I think I think Johnston is probably going to get a few more runs out, especially kind of maybe at the Gold Cup or something like that, because I do think that that's a kind of player that Canada is going to have a lot of use for. Scored for Canada as well. He did. Uh, in, in the last camp. Okay, speaking Everybody about did, new- though, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> speaking about newfound depth, central midfield. Um, this, we pared it down to just 10 players uh obviously you know there, there there are multiple positions three or you know as you mentioned in your piece today charlie you know it could be four as well depending mm-hmm. on how herman wants to play um but in terms of that central midfield position this is what we have um atiba hutchison still first pick love it always uh samuel piet mm-hmm. behind that um and then Estacchio, mark anthony k and jonathan osorio round out the top five scott arfield a little low on this one yeah <laughs> I mean, consider we, we don't, we don't know what his future is with the men's national team, of course, yeah. but um, realistically, this is, this is a pretty strong core, um, yes. you know, in, in, and especially with Steven Estacchio on the rise, right? This is, this is easily the best midfield Canada has had in probably at least a decade, uh, if not more. It's, it's really interesting just to see how many kinds of players there are in here. And it's just, I have no idea how you get them all on the pitch together. Uh, I, you probably don't do that. Um, but yeah, I think it's fairly straightforward that there's kind of a, a group of, of five here, six if you include our field, which I, we're still unsure if if we should or not. But there's kind of a group here of kind of the, the core guys who could be in, t- in contention to start any any given game against any opponent. And then mm-hmm. you've got you know a whole load of depth guys. Some of them are, are older veterans like, like Russell Tybert. Um, David David Wotherspoon, and then you've got younger guys that maybe are on the rise. Like, I guess Liam Fraser's been on the rise for it feels like five years now. 
but I mean, <laughs> Noble Akello, and then there's plenty of guys that didn't quite make our 10, you know, like, like the, the Michael Baldissimo's and, and Patrick Metcalf's or Ralph Prizo, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I think Marty, you wanted to talk about, uh, Sam Piet and, and Steven Estacchio. <laughs> I think, I think those should probably be swapped or they will be soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, like, I think so. I, I, I think like, I, I think Sammy Piet should play for Canada for as long as he wants. I think he's been great, but at the same time, like Estacchio might end up playing at the champions league next year. Right. Something we talked yeah. about last week. So, you know, I, I, I think those will end up being swapped. And I've just realized that I did skip ahead from the, uh, the, def- uh, the center backs. So we'll uh, have to go back. Well, we'll come back to that, right now. But yeah, <laughs> no, this, you're, this you're right, core though. is good. You're right yeah, though, about, I, about Estacchio, depending on, on where he goes. I think Sammy Piet always gets an extra, like, three spots up just because he tucks his shirt in <laughs> he's, he's that kind of mid and he's a mid he's like canada only has one kind of sammy piet right they don't have any other players that are like that and there's nothing wrong with that okay we're, we're gonna now go backwards go back to the center back position Derek cornelius a number one pick here steven vittoria kamal miller daniel henry rounding out the top four um that's the thing with this grouping, Charlie. Are we missing someone? It just feels like we're missing someone because Canada hasn't played that many games. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? Uh, and 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 maybe this is. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's not even a maybe. This is Canada's weakest position right now. Uh, mm-hmm. What? Like, where did you sort of end up with this with this ranking here? Well, yeah, I think there's basically four at the top here that you could conceivably throw into a game against against a big opponent. Uh, it depends on kind of what the plan is for Daniil Henry because he's been sort of drifting away from the national team for a little bit. Uh, had some pretty iffy, iffy performances, but he's been really good in, in Korea since he moved there over the last year. And I think, Marty, you were saying that you would like to see him brought back into the fold and given another opportunity. Uh well, this is just this is the tricky part about putting together a depth chart yeah. with, with so few games, right? Because the 2019 Gold Cup, it was Cornelius and, and it was Daniel Henry. Yeah, was and then we haven't seen him since. I think exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I mean it, that that's just a sort of a tough spot to be. I think he still deserves a chance here. Um, yeah. Elsewhere, lots of CPL uh, content in here. Joel Waterman uh, is is fifth best center back, which I love that, uh, above Ricardo Ferreira, who, uh, is without a club right now and obviously committed to Canada quite recently. And then Amir Didich and Dominic Sator making the top 10 as well here. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of CPL content. I mean, I think any of, any of Waterman, Didich, Sator, I'd be totally fine with playing any of those guys. I mean, Didich mm-hmm. has, it, it, it seems like John Herbin really likes Joel Waterman. He keeps bringing him into camps. Uh, I think he's still still waiting to to get some more time on the field, but Waterman was rise to rise up the depth chart in the last like two years has been just insane. But CPIU um, sports draft pick, yeah, just out of nowhere. Uh, and then Didich is Didich is great. He's probably I I don't know if there's any of those guys that would be better than Didich at you know defending a set piece because he's he's just so good in the air that mm-hmm. uh, and he's really tall which not all which is is something that you can't teach and something that you really really need in a center back especially in CONCACAF uh but yeah I could totally see any of those CPL guys getting a chance uh Sunday, really to probably rise soon. up right yeah, yeah yeah exactly just to rise up those rankings mm-hmm. okay uh let's switch to uh wingers Alfonso Davies there Who? I said it <laughs> uh Alfonso Davies and Jonathan David uh of course first picks on the left and the right um this seemed like a surprising consensus among the people that voted in this right because you have like liam miller junior hoylet okay fair enough like tejon buchanan from his performances at olympic uh, at the olympic qualifying tournament for sure and he continues to play well in mls like marco mm-hmm. bustos for sure he was invited into into the january camp and then on the left side like you know corbiani Obviously, Jaden Nelson makes sense. Bellu Tabla, sure. Like, it, well, like what? No, no. I mean, honestly, this like this doesn't seem as um, as as debatable. Perhaps I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think when you've got such incredible talent at the top, it's almost like 
it doesn't matter as much. <laughs> but uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, like, ju- no, you're, like junior. You're right. Okay, you have Junior Hoylet and Liam Miller underneath. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, those, those are significant great. players. They're very, great. very significant. I, I actually think that uh, again, this is maybe a case where a year and a half, maybe down the line, uh, two and three might be switched on the left there because Theo Corbiano could totally come in and and definitely surpass Liam Miller uh mm-hmm. if he if he gets a run of games at, at the club level and continues to be what we saw in the world cup qualifiers for canada uh so he's definitely a player everybody's really excited about and may i i think realistically sooner rather than later he'll be the first guy off the bench in the attack uh and then on the right i mean yeah junior hoylet man <laughs> he's he's still good he's looking for a club at the moment so anybody who knows of one should give him a call but <laughs> I, I don't think he's quite done with the national team yet. He's no. he's got plenty left to give. But exactly. uh, yeah, we we should have we should add as well. I mean, we we threw Marco Bustos and Tristan Borges onto the onto the right side here at the bottom of our our top five, which is fun. I don't know. You, you tell objectively that's fun. I, yeah, I mean, I, considering considering that Marco was called into that January camp, I don't th- I don't yeah. think it's that far fetched. It's really see another another MVP worthy year in the CPL. Mm-hmm. Totally, you're on the board. You're definitely definitely on the radar. Okay, let's finish this with striker center forward, um, Kyle Laren. This this is an interesting one, right? Because if we go back to when the U.S. played Canada in the Nations League, I think one and two are switched. Yeah, for sure. Lucas Cavallini uh, being number one. Uh, we'll talk about the third pick uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just obviously Kyle Laren just rising to the top, right? That's that's a no brainer after his, yeah. you know, twenty goal performance uh, in, in Turkey this year. Yeah, you just look at how incredible Kyle Laren's season was for Besiktas, and you cannot justify putting anybody ahead of him on this team, mm-hmm. right? He's just been no. been so good and scoring goals in maybe ways that we haven't seen him score them in the past because his work rate has been a lot better this year it's it's he's he's just been a completely new player i think after he had his little loan stint in belgium and he came back to turkey and he's just been phenomenal even even when we saw him briefly in those world cup qualifiers in march he was amazing he scored a bunch of goals he worked really well with with jonathan or with sorry with alfonso davies uh lucas cavallini is a great player man but he is on form easily second to Kyle Laren. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Daniel Jevonson, uh, third. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should have put there? the asterisk. I should have yeah. put the asterisk there. Uh, he's with the England youth setup at the moment. Um, obviously eligible for Canada, obviously scored for Sheffield United uh, in the Premier League uh, this month. Um, why is he above Teshu Akadeli and Theo Bear? Uh, because he's really good. <laughs> he anybody who anybody I think who can start a game in the Premier League and, and score a goal is should be on this list even if they haven't committed to Canada which by the way I mean Daniel dude come on why <laughs> don't don't do the don't do the Tamori thing don't don't chase like a cap with England just come play for Canada it'll be fine <laughs> yeah he's a I, I, I it's hard to get much of a read on him uh, because he hasn't played a whole lot at the, at even just a first team level anywhere, mm-hmm. but I mean, he's good enough for a Premier League team to be really excited about him, which should be good enough for us, I think. Yeah, I mean that that's fair enough, and again, just shows how futile this entire process is that we're giving yeah. someone like him a third spot, but like because we just haven't seen Canada play. Yep. That's kind of what it comes down to. Okay, of course, the men's national team back in World Cup qualifiers uh, next month. Those games on one soccer. Again, the the squad announcement coming out, we think sometime this weekend, just as we were talking, uh, Canada Soccer put out a media advisory for a chat with John Herdman uh, at about noon tomorrow. So hopefully sometime in the morning on Saturday uh, tomorrow as we're recording this. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, honestly, I... I this is there's some big like again this, again the Suriname game is is a must win very important game considering mm-hmm. um, uh, how good their squad is 
Okay, before we go, we wanted to uh, leave a little interview that I ended up doing this week, um, bringing this back to the CPL with Darren and Martin in Austria. Uh, Charlie, do you want to explain this story to people? I mean, I can try. It's just so cool. So <laughs> it, it sounds like just this, uh, you you obviously have a better read on it, but I think it's just this this kid in, in Austria, right? He was, I don't know, looking up looking up football highlights and he found... Corey Bent playing at the Island Games for the Halifax Wanderers, and he just like fell in love <laughs> with this Corey, player. Yeah, Corey Bent. Uh, I, the, I think the I talked to Corey about this story, and his quote was, "I've never been to Austria. I've never been close." <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, uh, Darren, this is a obviously a very uh, cute interview <laughs> for sure yeah. um he, he loves cory bent got a signed jersey for his birthday and all that so we'll throw to this um and uh, and again hopefully this will warm your heart uh yeah. hopefully we'll have more on the cpl season uh coming up in the next week or two fingers crossed next week we'll have uh something maybe to give darren something to be excited about okay so the question that i think will be on everyone's mind watching this is how the hell did you guys end up liking the Halifax Wanderers? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think it's it's beginning last year in August. Mm -hmm. um, Darren comes to me and say, um, sorry, Dad, can I have your phone? I will watch um, soccer videos on YouTube. And I think one hour later he comes, oh my God, Dad, you know Koei Band? And I, huh? Who? Corey Band. He's the best player in the world. He he plays by the one who was uh, have seen Canada. Oh, okay. And that's that was the beginning from from yeah the the story. And then he comes <laughs> to me and say, um, um, I have my, on my birthday that um my biggest wish is it's a jersey from Corey. You know it's possible. And I think, oh my God, <laughs> how I can, can do that there. Yeah? And so I, 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 I uh, watched on Instagram and I, I, yeah, I find Curry Band and I write him. And yeah, was was really cool. And, and he's uh, so a nice guy. And yeah, dreams can, can really come true. What drew you to Curry Band? Why? Did you, how did you come across this game? And then what made you think, holy cow, this care, this Darren or this uh, Corey Bent guy is special. What drew you to him? Um, well, uh, it's, it's, that one comes to me on, on this day. And he said, um, that please uh, uh, forget Lionel Messi and, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, Corey is it's the fa uh, fastest player. In, in the world, the, the best striker in the world. Um, he's, he's so great. And yeah. Uh, and then how did you get the jersey? How did you get the kit? Um, yeah, I write uh, Chloe. And yeah, he, he was uh, very happy. And he said, of course, of course, we can do that. And I think... Uh, four or five weeks later, yeah, we have the the jersey. Amazing. What's it? Uh, do you keep in close contact with Corey? Like what? Like what has he said to you guys? Yeah, we have. Yeah, I think one day in the week we we have contact. Um, really, eh? Nice. Yeah, yeah. We we write yeah with him and and yeah. Uh, last week, uh, Corey have have her, uh, his birthday. Um, we write with, with him and, and we congratulate him. And it's yeah, a, a German player by, by one of us, Peter Schale. And yeah, we have, we have contact. That's amazing. Peter would be a great translator for sure. Um, so yeah. what, like, what, what's next? Are you guys going to try to come to Halifax to see a game? And like, what, like how, what, what's next for, for your guys' fandom of, of the Halifax Wanderers and Corey Bent? 
Well, the biggest wish from from day one it's it's a game to, to watch in, in in the stadium in Canada, and um, but it's not so easy. Yeah, it's it's a, a big distance Austria to to Canada, and in this the 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 situation now with COVID it's it's not so easy. But um, yeah, we are we are big fans from from the one of us and from Kobe band and yeah maybe in the next years we can go to see a live game with one of us and then uh, sorry uh, how how is your how is your english there does he does he speak english could he understand me right now can you english no no it's not so no nah, really okay not so what? good not so good <laughs> I love that. Why don't we do why don't we do a bit of translation then? Because I want to ask him a couple questions. Um, so if that's okay. Um, so if, if you don't mind translating. So I guess like I wanted to ask specifically about like about Corey, about him finding that game on YouTube. Like, does he were like like how does he come across this game? I'm just genuinely curious. Hast du von Corey die Spiel auf YouTube gefunden? Na, wie hast du es gefunden? Wie hast du es gesucht damals? Ich habe einfach M Spiele Kowi angegeben. Band, okay. also Band habe ich okay. angegeben. Okay. Okay. Um, ja, yeah. he he says um, he gives uh, the name Kowi on YouTube and he find Kowi Band and he watched that games from him hmm. and that was the beginning. And then what what makes Kowi Band better than Leo Messi? Was macht Koi Band äh, äh, besser wie Lionel Messi? Äh, tricksen und <lacht> ja. schießen. Okay, okay. Und warte, eine Sache noch. Gut, geil schießen. Ach, das kann ich nicht sagen, okay. Um, he said, um, it's, he's so fast and, and he has uh, so uh, uh, technik. Ja, yeah, and, yeah. and it's better. <lacht> Messi ist nicht so gut. And like, I also want to ask, like, you can also talk to Corey, right? Like in in Canada, like I'm sure you know that the league's only been around for for you know two years, and yeah. you know the the big kicker with a place like Halifax is if I'm a if I'm a youth player, like I don't ever get to meet a professional, I don't ever even get to see the professional game. So for people in Canada, that's a big deal to talk to like someone like Corey. So maybe that's my question to you is like. You know, you love this player, and he immediately reaches out to you, and you start talking to him. Like, how did that make you feel? Maybe talking to Corey Bent for the first time. Wie hast du dich gefühlt, als du das erste Mal mit Corey um, ins Gespräch gekommen bist, als du mit, mit ihm geschrieben hast und mit dem Geschenk? Um, ich war sehr erschrocken, dass es gekommen ist, und ich war sehr, sehr glücklich. Okay. Um, that one says uh, he was very proud uh, in the school. He tells everybody his best friend is Corey Band, professional soccer player from Canada. And yeah, the first time um, it was, um, he was very nervous because Corey is a professional football player. And uh, yeah, he was very <laughs> nervous. <laughs> But can, you, can you attest to that? Was he, was he very nervous? I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, could well, you tell? Could you tell he was nervous? Yeah, um, uh, I said to Taiwan, um, it comes a present for his birthday, and mm. when when the the, the um, gift comes, he cry. I wow. said, "Oh my God, Dad! Oh my, I cannot believe it! It's the jersey from Kobe Bryant! Oh my God!" And he cry, and in the next moment, he have the phone. He called. Every person uh, from the club, uh, from from her school, uh, from his school, and says, "Oh my God, I have the gift from Kobe Bryant. I'm so proud. I'm so proud." Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, one final question for both of you. Maybe Derek can go first. What do you make of the Halifax Wanderers this year? How are they going to do? I stop. So was the 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 Halifax this year reichen? Uh, the one was in the second place. Um, that one says, um, 
I he hope um, the one of us can can win the the the, the league. And uh, now I think it's it's a good team, yeah, with mm -hmm. a lot of young players, and I think they have good chances to the, to uh, in this year. We'll bring the Wanderers have to come to you guys, I think. Corey, Corey uh, has to come to you. Yeah, of course he can come. <laughs> <laughs> he'll he'll have a place to stay, anyways. Okay, uh, thanks so much, guys. That was awesome. Thank you.